Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new. These are all the books I read in June, let's talk about them. Yes, we are back with my June wrap up. Did you like my new little like intro? I feel like I might start doing that. It's a little bit of fun. Um, anyway, so obviously in today's video, we'll run through every single book I read, my thoughts, my feelings, as well as all the fun little stats that I love to accumulate throughout the month. And I know that a lot of people like to kind of be interested in it as well. So without further ado, let's hop into the stats. I read a total of seven books in the month of June. Technically, I finished six. We are filming on the last day of June today and I have about 200 pages left of my current read. It's a YA so I'm really hoping I can finish it, if not I'm still going to include it in today's stats, so a total of seven books were read in the month of June. That spans across 2,450 pages. That seems more than last month, definitely. I'm not sure if it's my best reading month in terms of pages so far, I'm not too sure, I'll have to kind of like dig a little bit deeper for that. What's the most exciting thing about the month of June was that it was such, such a good reading month. I had no books below three stars and then from three stars, there was only one three star, three four stars, and two five stars. Yay! <laughs> oh, it was such a good reading month just in like pure joy of everything that I was reading as well as just like good books and oh, I can't wait to talk to you guys about them. All of my books this month were physical. Six of those were off my physical TBR and one of them was a reread. No audiobooks, no ebooks, no nothing. Everything was physical this month. Therefore, because everything was off my physical TBR, it meant no Scrib loans or library loans. Those books spanned across two different genres, four contemporaries, and three romances. The age categories were divided by six adult and one YA. Oh, June, it was my birthday, but it was just such a good reading month. So the books I read in June were A Reread of Half a World Away by Mike Gale, A Girl with a Louding Voice by Abby Dare, One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid, Set on You by Abby Lee or Leah, I'm not too sure, Girlfriends by Holly Bourne, An Arc, Thank You Harper Fiction for sending me an early copy of Love Me Do by Lindsay Kelk, and the one I'm currently in the middle of, I'm really, really hoping I can finish either today or tomorrow, is The Do's and Donuts of Love by Adibar J. Gira. I want to say is how you pronounce the author's name. Every time I pick up one of her books, I am solely focused on trying to pronounce her name right, so I'm really, really sorry if I'm butchering it. But those are all seven books I read in the month of June. Like I said, I started the month off with a reread because I had this whole video idea where I was going to do a reading vlog, rereading some of my favourite books from the year of 2020 when I started my channel to kind of go alongside my little mini series. I did help celebrating the fact that I turned three years on booktube. That video kind of failed, but I still did reread one of my favourite books of all time, not just of 2020. And that is Half a World Way by Mike Gale. This time round, this was the first book that I annotated in pen, which is so crazy. I'm seeing all these people on Instagram and everything like really beautifully to annotating their books and it just looks so stunning. I'm not as good as them, but I'm trying and that's all that matters. But there are so many tabs in this book. I stuck with the yellow and orange theme, so the tabs don't kind of correspond to a theme in the book. I just kind of stuck with yellow and orange throughout because of the cover. And I'll try and show you like some of my things that I was doing to try and like make it all colourful. So I used pens and highlighters and I thought it was just quite cute. Um, I love the fact that this is going to be part of my forever collection because it is like one of my favourite books of all time and it's now like completely tabbed up with my favourite things and it makes me so happy. It was such a good book to start the month off strong seeing it was my birthday month as well. It was just really nice to revisit one of my favourites. If you are new to my channel and you have no idea what this book is about because I feel like if you're a regular you know how much I love this book and you probably know the synopsis by now but this book basically follows two main characters is told in dual perspective Kerry and Noah and they are long lost brother and sister. From a young age they get split up and in and put into care homes because their mother can't look after them anymore. Kerry ends up staying in the foster care system her entire life until she's 18. However Noah because he's a lot younger he was only like one year old um, he gets taken in by a kind of very kind of middle class wealthy family so they have completely different upbringings and they spend their childhoods apart and then as they get older they kind of reconnect and this book is absolutely beautiful so heart-wrenching so emotional but it is truly one of my favorite books of all time and I'm just so happy I now have it all kind of like tabbed up with all my thoughts and feelings it was such a good start to the month 
And then in my June TBR game, I got a prompt I never ever got before, and that was to complete a book off my A to Z challenge kind of list. I have a whole list in my notes app on my phone of like books I want to complete the A to Z challenge with. And so I decided to read A Girl With A Loud Voice by Abby Dare. This book has been on my TBR, I wanna say since like 2021? maybe I can't remember I remember buying it I brought it with Mark in Waterstones it's one of the first time I've vlogged out in public so it must be kind of fairly recent to when I started my channel but I don't remember going to Waterstones in 2020 because of lockdown so it might have been 2021 anyway tangent over um I finally got around to reading this book this book was so daunting to me because it was kind of like a writing style that I wasn't used to it wasn't like this cute fluffy romance or a typical kind of contemporary that I usually read although it is a contemporary it's kind of like a very different vibe this book basically follows our main character Adandi who is living as a child in Nigeria in a very very small village where it's very very common for young daughters to get shipped off by their parents to older men to become their wives and kind of that's your life. Adundi has completely different plans. She wants an education. Unfortunately, she did have some sort of an education, but her parents could no longer afford to pay for it after her mother's death. So she ends up getting sold as bride money to a local older man uh, by her father. And she tries to get out of the situation because all she wants is an education. She wants a better life for herself. And it basically follows her journey of, of running away from home yeah, it's not a spoiler. I was checking if it was a spoiler or not. It's not. Uh, so she embarks on a journey of running away from home and trying to find a better life for herself. And I thought this book was so, so good. I really, really enjoyed it. What I loved most about this book was the writing style. As Adandi got more educated throughout this book, the writing and kind of her inner internal monologue got better and better because at the start it's very very broken English because she isn't fluent in English yet. So kind of like not only do you see her physically going on this journey, you read her going on this journey because her English gets better throughout the book which I thought was such a unique perspective and take on this book but what I wasn't expecting from this book at all was that there was a kind of mystery involved I don't want to say any more than that because I went into it without knowing that aspect and I think it really kind of enhances the book in kind of making you want to continue reading and kind of making it a page turner um so I really enjoyed this book I gave it four stars I then wanted a completely different change of vibe so I picked up a book on my TBR that was very very well known in the book community and that was One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is now my fourth Taylor Jenkins Reid. I've read After I Do, that's the one I started with and then it took me so long to read Malibu Rising, Seven, of Heaven, blah, blah, blah. Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and then on to One True Loves. And this is the one I think I was most excited for. Like I from the synopsis that I heard years and years ago, years and years ago, this book has always been on my radar, but I just never ended up picking it up. Finally, I brought it this year and I've read it this year, which is always nice to know that you've read a book that you brought this year. Unfortunately, I didn't love this book as much as I thought I was going to. I still enjoyed it. I still gave it a four stars. This book basically follows, I feel like I say this all the time, but this book basically follows our main character. Emma, who has a husband called Jesse and they love traveling together. It's kind of, they never have a home base because both of their jobs kind of allow them to work remotely. So they're always, always traveling. And then one day Jesse goes off for a work project and he doesn't come back. He dies in a helicopter crash. So Emma has to really grieve, really grieve for him um, and get over him. And she doesn't think she'll ever will. And then an old childhood friend comes back into her life and she ends up getting engaged to this childhood friend called Sam. However, Jesse isn't dead. He calls her two and a half years later saying, hey, I'm alive, I'm coming back to you, we can start this life. And this book basically follows Emma really struggling to understand what's happened. Jessie, her childhood love, the guy that she always thought she'd be with, has died, but he's back in her life. But she's moved on, she's found happiness in another way, so kind of how does she deal with it? And it was a really interesting conversation regarding that aspect. And all I wrote in my notes was, Jessie is a dick. <laughs> I'm very much Team Sam. If you've read this book, you know. Um, but I enjoyed the writing style of Taylor Jenkins Reid's writing style. No, it's not my favourite book of hers. I think my ratings probably go in what I've read so far. Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, After I Do, One True Loves, Malibu Rising. Um, so it was a good read. It was a nice kind of summary read, especially because June in the UK, we've had gorgeous, gorgeous sunshine sun and shine so it was just a really fun read nothing kind of like too memorable but I did really enjoy it so I gave it four stars at this point of the month I had been book shopping for my birthday and if you've seen that video which I'll link up above and down below if you haven't but I came back with 
a hell of a lot of new books and I thought my entire TBR was going to be scrapped for the month but Mark asked me to read the book that he picked out for me so I went and did that and kind of I went a little bit off track with my TBR but not as much as I thought so I read Set On You by Amy Lee this was Mark's pick in my bookish bingo that I did for my birthday and this is the first book in the companion series of I think it's called Influencers but the second book is so much more well known that's X's and O's which follows the bookstagrammer but this book basically follows Crystal who is a fitness influencer so I think every book in this like series I think it's gonna be a trilogy is an influencer of some kind so we have a fitness one X's and O's is a book influencer bookstagrammer um, and she goes to the gym one day and she's setting up her camera to film her workout in like the best squat rack that has the best lighting for filming she's put all her weights there all her stuff is there and then this dude come out comes over and just steals her squat rack and she starts to call him the squat whack, squat rack thief and it kind of follows the sexual tension of these two and obviously it's a romance so you can kind of see what's going to happen I thought this book was okay this is the book that I rated lowest this month of three stars I still had a fun time reading it but it wasn't anything memorable. There was quite a bit of miscommunication and kind of the reasons why she didn't like to talk to this dude in the beginning, who's Scott, which is a love interest, who's the Scott Rack thief. I just thought it was a little bit petty. I didn't like the miscommunication, but I absolutely loved love interest. Scott was such a cute kind of golden retriever love interest. So I think I mainly kind of read on for him and it was a funky read, but I'm hoping for more with X's and O's, that's for sure. I then come on to one of the best books I read in the month. It's the other five star. <laughs> I don't count Half a World Away as like my favourite book of the month because it was a reread. I already know I love that book. So I would say this book was my favourite book of the month because I gave it five stars. So obviously. And that was... <laughs> I love this book so much. Girlfriends by Holly Bourne. I'm currently, side tangent, figuring out my mid-year book freak out tag video. And obviously the first question is a tough one. It's your favourite book of the year. And this is is giving me food for thought with the dead romantics. Imagine the dead romantics here. I'm like, I don't know what to pick as my favorite book of the year. I love this book so much. I knew I loved Holly Bourne's writing style. I read Pretending by her. I reread it this year, gave it four stars. Really, really enjoyed that book, but there's just something in it for me with that book that kind of doesn't give me that like five star feeling. And I had high hopes for this book, but I wasn't expecting it to be five stars, that's for sure. And I just couldn't not give it five stars. It's quite a slow kind of burn book, as in there's a constant kind of intrigue as to where the plot goes. And I'll get into it before I start going off on a massive, massive, massive tangent. This book is told in the perspective of Fern and she has a best friend, Jessica. And the, this book follows dual timelines. So you get Jessica and Fern, how they became best friends and them growing up together as best friends in the past timeline and then you have the present timeline when Jessica just randomly comes back into Fern's life after having no communication with each other for about I want to say about 10 years um, and you don't know why they stopped speaking to each other and that's the constant intrigue that you have throughout this book. What I loved most about this book is the fact that it explores the topic of female friendship so well and how toxic it can be and just kind of like the evolution of friends like friends can be part of your life for a certain period and then come out of it because you're they're no longer needed in that season of your life like I there's a quote that I can't really remember but it's like friends are for seasons not for life and you have friends to, to three different parts of your life as you kind of progress and evolve as your own kind of main character sort of thing um, and that's kind of what the main book kind of explores but it also explores a lot of triggering topics Holly Bourne kind of does hone in on every one of her books around these topics of sexual assault, rape, miscarriages and drug abuse. So be wary of those if you're interested in reading this book after I rave about it. <laughs> I'm just gonna read what I wrote on Goodreads for my Goodreads review because I feel like this really encapsulates how much I love this book because I wrote it instantly after finishing, book, finishing this book. I finished it on the train home from a hospital appointment and I had tears in my eyes reading this in public. I couldn't hold myself back. So I say, ah, so beautiful, emotional, real and raw. Went through an emotional roller coaster reading this book, but just the ending was so beautiful. It explores the friendship between Jess and Fern as they grow up together and then grow apart when Jessica does something that Fern cannot forgive. This book is told in dual perspective and I was constantly intrigued to find out what exactly Fern did to make Jess feel the way she does in the present timeline. Having the past timeline explore the beginnings of Jess and Fern's relationship really allowed myself to feel connected to the characters. Loved it, in capital letters. 
such a page turner with how the story was written that you once you finished a chapter in the present timeline, you would flash back to the past to find out more about how their friendship evolved. It always left you on a cliffhanger. It was such a clever way of storytelling. Reminded me a little bit of Pretending by Holly Bourne and felt like Jessica from Girlfriends and April from Pretending could be friends in real life for sure. I just absolutely adored this book. If this book is on your radar, I really, really highly ch recommend checking it out if you're interested in it and you can deal with the trigger warnings because I thought it was such a beautiful exploration on female friendship and yeah, stunning absolutely stunning <laughs> my camera battery is gonna die i really want to finish talking about the books the last finished book i read in the month of june was an arc that i received early thanks to harper fiction and that is lindy kelp's brand new book love me do i'll put the actual cover on screen here but it looks a little bit like this um basically this book follows our main character phoebe who ends up going to LA to visit her sister who lives out there. However, when she arrives, her sister has to jet off for a work kind of gathering thing she can't get out of. So she, her sister ends up going to San Francisco, leaving Phoebe with her house in LA. She ends up meeting her sister's personal trainer, Belle, as well as her sister's sexy next door neighbor, Ren. And she ends up kind of making a little bit of a trio with these two people. Enter a love triangle. When Belle kind of confesses to Phoebe that she absolutely is has always been in love with Ren, Phoebe makes it her job to be the matchmaker and get Ren and Belle together. However, during this process, Phoebe ends up realizing she also has feelings for Ren. <laughs> if you think, nah, that book isn't for me, love triangles aren't my thing, I think Lindsay Kelk did the love triangle trope so, so well. There was never a point in the book where I thought, it was an icky situation or it was kind of like a really bad vibe. I thought it was done really, really well. Okay, sorry if my angles changed. I have to get my camera on charge. We were talking about this book. <laughs> so that is the synopsis and kind of like the main kind of plot of the book that you follow throughout. The way I'm torn about this book, I've never experienced anything like it. At one point of this book, I was like, this is gonna be a two stars. I'm just gonna have to get through it because it's Lindsay Kelp. Like I can't not finish a Lindsay Kelp book, but I really wanna DNF it. That was my thought, like internal monologue. And then the end, I wanted to give it five stars. I was squealing. I was like, oh my God, yes, just stay in LA. Ah! I was like, oh my God, do it, do it, do it. And I was just like, absolutely, like I'd at that point fallen head over heels with the characters and just wanting the best for them. So how the hell do you rate a book that at one point you wanted to give two star and DNF and then the ending, you want to be like five stars, like all time favorite. I'm like, how do you, rate a book like that i was so torn in the end i spoke to mark and he was like think about it as a film the ending you're kind of a bit lost because you don't really know what's happening but by the end you're like oh my god like one of the best films i've ever seen so i thought about it in that terms and i'm gonna settle on this book being a four star it had minimal miscommunication even though it was a love triangle trope there was a really really cute lovely friendship between not only phoebe and Belle. Also her sister, when she finally got back from her work trip, that was a really cute bond. And I think the characters were written really well in kind of their relationships and kind of getting to know one another. And Ren, I think was another one of my book boyfriends of the year, along with Scott from Set On You. They were both really, really cute kind of golden retriever style book boyfriends. But the thing that really kind of didn't gel with me when reading this book was when another character was introduced fairly in fairly early on in the beginning of the book and it was another next door neighbor of Suzanne who's Phoebe's sister. The bit that really threw me was that Phoebe had to deliver parcels to this other next door neighbor because they got wrongly delivered at her house. So Phoebe as the kind kind of sister she does she goes over to the next door neighbor and tries and attempts to deliver the parcels but the house is gated she can't do anything um, and she didn't want to leave the parcels by the front gate so she ends up kind of doing like the intercom and the person inside says, you need to leave them at my front door. I'm not coming to get them. So Phoebe has to climb over the fence and it was just a really weird scene. And then when she gets her parcels, the person inside doesn't want to take them from her and tells Phoebe to deliver them again on a different day. So at this point, the old lady, villainous old lady, it seems, has opened the gates, but started to shut them again. So Phoebe has to run down the driveway with parcels that she had to take back. Yeah, you getting me? And try and make it through the gate before the gate shut because she didn't want to like climb back over the fence. I was 
when I read this chapter, I was so confused. I was like, one, what has this old lady got to do with the story? Because at that point, we we're still fairly new into the characters. Two, what a weird, very strange situation. How the hell did Lindsay Kell come up with that concept? I do not know. <laughs> and it was just, it really, really threw me. I was so confused. And that was at the point where I'm like, well, if this is the turn of the plot, if this if this is where the plot is now going, I don't want to read it anymore. And this is when I was kind of thinking I want to DNF it. I pulled through a couple of more chapters involved this old lady. I didn't really vibe with, but by the end, I gotta say, I love this old lady. She was a famous actress back in the day and now she, once her husband died, she lives in solitude in this house. So she can be a little bit grumpy, understandably, but the way she got introduced into the story for me was just very, very weird, but I did end up loving her by the end. But overall, I feel very, very conflicted with the story because I love the friendship, I love the characters, I love the writing style because I love Lindsay Kelk. There was a few little hiccups along the way, but overall I've given it a four star. <laughs> what a whirlwind. And finally, the book I'm currently in the middle of, I'm really, really hoping I can finish it today or latest tomorrow on July 1st, is The Do's and Donuts of Love by Adiba J. Gira. Oh, I want to say that's how you pronounce her name. I'm really, really trying. I need to stop saying that because I do try with pronunciation every single time I try and pronounce an author's name or book title that I haven't seen or kind of heard before. So I do really try. Um, but I think that's how you pronounce your author's name. This is her latest release. It came out like very beginning of June. I got it on my birthday book haul, but I was instantly intrigued by this book because yes, I loved Honey and Ish's Guide to Fake Dating. I haven't read Henna Wars yet, but this synopsis got me hooked. This book basically follows our main character, Shireen, who is a budding baker and enters the first ever Irish baking competition show that gets aired on TV. And she enters and she manages to get a place Within the mix of those 25 contestants, her Rex has also managed to apply and get in. And the first task is set and they have to work in pairs and the two of them get put together. But she also meets other people along the way and it basically follows her competing in this competition, trying to figure out a dynamic with her ex while also falling in love with another girl in the baking competition. And I'm a hundred and ten pages into this. I'm enjoying it, but I'm not getting that like E feeling that I did with Honey and Issues Guide to Fake Dating. So I don't know how I'm going to feel about this book. I'm really hoping it reaches the four star because I'd love it to be on par with Honey and Issues Guide to Fake Dating, but I don't think it's going to be better than that book for me personally. But I still have like 200 pages to go. It is a YA. I do read it very, very quickly, but we'll see if I can finish it today. But I'm predicting like a 3.5 four stars. We'll see. You'll have to follow me on Instagram to find out what I actually rate it. <laughs> so to wrap up, I read all these books in the month of June. It was such, such a good reading month. I really, really enjoyed my time. I'm really hoping July is just as good or better. Um, in terms of best to worst, because I wanna start doing that in my wrap ups as well, we're gonna go, so out of the books I actually read and finished with official ratings, this is my order. So Nothing Can Beat Half a World Away by Mike Gale, but then another favorite book of the year of mine, Girlfriends by Holly Bourne. And then, yes, Unsurprising, or surprisingly, we're going with Love Me Do by Lindsay Kelk. I just loved the ending and I loved how kind of all the characters wrapped up. And then we're going with One True Loves, A Girl with a Landing Voice, and then Set On You. It was really tough to try and order Love Me Do, One True Loves, and A Girl with a Landing Voice because they were all four stars. But I think that's how I'm going to stack them. And then hopefully, this will kind of sit here. That's what I'm hoping. <laughs> Fingers crossed. So those are all the books I read in the month of June. Let me know in the comments down below what you read in June. Did you read any brand new favourites like I did? I would love to know what books you read and what you rated them down in the comments down below. Are there any books you think I should check out? Let me know. Have you read any of these books that I've read and what were your ratings and thoughts? Let's have a major bookish chat in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a massive thumbs up and subscribe down below to see future content from me. I do anything from monthly TBRs, monthly wrap-ups, weekly reading vlogs and any other bookish content. I usually have it on this channel so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future uploads and with that being said i'll see you in my next video bye guys